It's time to welcome all creatures from all realms of the universe as it's time for On the Couch, starring the one, the only, Resident Unleashed. Thanks for having me on the couch. Oh. Oh, I mean, it's my couch, but still, thanks for having me. Is that right, Tony? Alright. Stand up straight. Assumptions are a very common occurrence within human nature. I bet you're assuming things about me right now. Honestly. Something like, you know, I look like a young teenage boy. Is a very common misconception that people have about me based on my appearance alone. I've also had some people assume that I am transgender or gay based on the way I choose to act and present myself. I can say for sure that I know myself well enough to say that all of those things are not true. I'm just a tomboy who is trying to live their life the way they want to live it. All these people assuming things about me has honestly made me dislike assumptions and I'm really an advocate for clearing things up which is why I'm making this video today. The discussion around Kanji and Naoto is what I would like to call taboo, but I'm really unsure. I honestly feel uncomfortable thinking about it most of the times because you can easily say something that might steer daggers into people's hearts. So because of this, I'll issue a warning here. I'm going to be talking about some controversial topics in this video. And if you think you might be offended by it, I do advise you not to watch it. I really don't want to accidentally hurt people's feelings. So with that all out of the way, let's get into the meat of the discussion and talk about the misunderstandings and assumptions of Naoto, Shirogane, and Kanji Tatsumi. I first encountered a question after Kanji encountered Naoto in Persona 4 Golden for the first time. Is Kanji gay? This caused me to go Google it to spoil the story for myself a little, and I found out that Naoto was actually a girl. I was honestly shocked because Naoto really looks like a small anime boy in the golden opening, but I shrugged it off. Now I wanted to know the answer to this question because I was just generally curious and I didn't want to potentially wait tens of hours for the answer. Before I could successfully get rid of the topic and play the game again, I encountered a forum board that said Kanji is gay and Naoto is trans. I was confused. Honestly, because I hadn't really had much exposure to this character. I did, however, think it was a bit of a baseless claim at the time, but I didn't know, so I gave it a chance because for all I knew it could have been the truth. After playing through the game and analysing the characters, I finally found myself an answer to that question. So to get the answer, first we need to revisit Persona 4's core theme of pursuing your true self. The shadow world creates shadow of people, but only a part of the person is what this shadow is replicating. In order to defeat the shadow, the person must accept it as another part of themselves and move forward with this. This is explained throughout the game quite well. But there is another part that the game lacks to explain, causing a lot of confusion, especially with the topic we're talking about in this video. Their shadows are not how they see themselves at all. Rather, they are how other people interpret them. The opinions of others can skew how things really are, thus creating a reflection of someone that the original person could not accept as part of themselves. But while it isn't how they see themselves, it is still a huge part of someone's identity, because how other people view you does make up that. So they accept it as a part of themselves, and in the end, it changes into their persona. This reflects people accepting baseless claims about themselves and correcting people so their image then changes to the image that the person has of themselves. The easiest example I can draw from the game without using the two mentioned at the start is Rise. Rise was seen in the Shadow World as some sort of risque sex worker because of her status as an idol. We find out this behaviour is very unlike Rise in real life, where she is a lot more reserved and doesn't want to draw too much attention to herself during her stay in Inaba. That is, unless she is kind of, you know, simping for you, Narukami. But that's okay because she only simps for him. After confronting these shadows, it's easier for them to express themselves without fearing what others think about them. And that's how their characters develop throughout the game. Well, that's the whole point of Persona 4. To be able to be yourself without any repercussions. So then we go back 
to the two questions that surround the stars of the video. Is Kanji gay? And is Naoto trans? Let's start off with Kanji. Now Kanji's shadow self is along the same lines of what a lot of people associate with people who are gay, simply because he is flamboyant. The bosses help reinforce that line of thinking too, as they are mostly naked, strong men. But this isn't the Kanji we know at all. It is vastly different to who he really is. This is because once people found out that Kanji liked cute things, basically, things that aren't very manly, they assumed he was gay. This happens a lot during youth, because young people are fueled by stereotypical thinking, especially back when the developers of Atlas were young. I want to say it's slowly changing, but I was a victim of this nasty stereotypical thinking too. And I'm only 22 at the time this video was made, so I don't really know because my experience was still pretty shitty when I was at school. Regardless, this view of Kanji was reflected in the shadow world without people actually knowing how Kanji was. And this view only made Kanji more uncomfortable with himself as he was questioning what he wanted with his relationship with Naoto at the time. Another point with Kanji is this behavior is common among people who do end up alone at a young age. They tend to attach themselves to people who talk to them a lot, which can cause confusion for both themselves and the person that they are around simply because they don't really know how friendships work. Kanji is a very complicated character who is trying to find where he fits in a complicated world. Just from his shadow self alone, I cannot say that Kanji is in any way at least bisexual because he does develop feelings for Naoto throughout the whole game. So, it, she's a girl. But, like, if Atlas wants to openly say that he is, I actually don't really care. Because it doesn't take away from the excellent character development he has throughout the game. And it's also just something that honestly shouldn't make a person any less of a person. It's just a thing. Who cares? Right? It's, it's just a set. But at the moment, I can't really say that he is, because... He doesn't really express any of that behavior throughout the game. He just tries to attach himself to his friends. Now, let's talk about Naoto. I can say for sure that there is a definite answer to her question, but let's get into her stuff first. So, Naoto is introduced as a small detective boy to the investigation crew. She does this because she thinks women don't have a place in the industry that she's trying to work towards, so it'd be easier for her to pretend to be a man to be accepted. This story is supposed to reflect how women felt when they tried to pursue careers that were male-dominated at the time. Historically, women in the workplace has been pushed aside for their male counterparts, even if they could do the job better because of historical development of human society, which is something I really don't want to delve into during this video. Naoto actively pushes against the idea of turning into a male when she encounters her shadow self. It's not what she wants to do. But what is presumed by a lot of people because of her fear of not being able to pursue her career. After this encounter, Naoto opens up about being a female and moves forward, accepting who she really is, while still pushing to do what she wants to do. As she begins to realize her gender is an insignificant factor, as she still has the ability to solve cases just as well as anyone else could. Naoto being transsexual disrupts her whole character arc and development and just doesn't make sense. So no, Naoto is not even remotely transsexual. So there you guys have it. Naoto and Kanji's character development is a lot deeper than what's on the surface. I was honestly scared of making this video because of the um, topic, it could hurt people, but you know, personally, you do you, I do me, like, I'm not trying to offend anybody here, and I feel like I have to say that all the time because I'm just so nervous, but anyway, I want everyone to be happy doing whatever makes them tick, as long as it's not hurting other human beings, or animals, or, you know, like, it's, it's within reason. Moving back to Persona 4. The one thing I really like about the game when comparing it to the other games in the franchise is this one has a lot of content that you need to analyze in order to fully understand it, which is something I really enjoy doing. 
And with that all out of the way, tell me what you guys think. Am I missing the point of Persona 4, or do you agree with what I'm saying? And, you know, I don't sound insane. Or maybe I sound insane. Let me know in the comment section down below. And please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new. With that all being said and done, my name is Resident Leash, the resident who sat around wondering if this was a good idea, and ultimately decided she'd take up all the backlash in the world to unleash it out into the world. And I will catch you all next time. Thank you all for watching this episode of On the Couch with Resident Unleashed. Now it's time for us to go out into the big wide world and finally get off the couch. Boy, I'm gonna